In this module, I'm going to show you how to insert headers, footers, and page numbers into your document. Before we begin actually adding header and footer information, I want to show you three different ways to access the header and footer contextual tab to create your headers, footers, and page numbers. The first way is by double clicking. So what we're going to do is go to either the header area or the footer area on your page and double click. So I'm going to do a header, so we'll double click on the header area. Once we do this, it takes us into the header and opens up the design tab for the header and footer tools. Here we've got all of our options available to us to create a header and footer. Once you've created your header, double click within your document to exit out of it and return to your document. The second way to add a header or footer is by right clicking in the header or footer area to access it. So we'll come down to the footer area this time. Do a right click, edit footer, and it takes us into the footer area and again opens up the design tab for headers and footers. And we've got all of our options again available to us. This is the second way that you can access it. To come out, again, we could double click within our document or we can click close header and footer to close it out. Our third option is by using the ribbon. Now because we're inserting headers and footers and page numbers, we're going to go to the insert tab makes it very easy to remember. Insert header and footer under insert tab. So let's go ahead and click on the insert tab. We're going to go over to the right until we see the header and footer group and we've got three icons or three options available to us. So depending on what we're doing we would choose one of the options. So if we wanted to work on our header, we click on header, it gives us a drop down and gives us multiple templates available to us for headers that Microsoft has created. We could also add more headers from um, office.com. We could edit the header. Now because we don't have a header to edit, when we click edit it would take us into the blank header and we could create one manually. Or if we had a header on this document, we could remove the header. Now let's go ahead and add one of their blank headers. So we'll click on the very first one here and it inserts a blank header. Now it's got an area called type here. This is what they call a placeholder, and this is where you would type your information. So for instance, if I wanted to type in my name in this point, I would type it over the placeholder, and it would type it there. Okay. When I'm done adding my header information, double-click within my document to come back out to my document. Now you'll notice when you're working within your document, the header and footer, they're grayed out. You can't actually click on the header and edit any information in it. You have to actually go into it by double clicking again or accessing it through the toolbar and edit it that way. Now when you're in the header or footer area, your document is grayed out. So you can't actually edit your document until you go back to the document by double clicking or closing out the header or footer. Just something to keep in mind when you're working on your documents. So now we've gone over the three ways that you can access the design tab and create your header and footer. So at this point, I want to show you how to add headers and footers to two different types of documents. One's a simple document. It's just multiple page documents, so we'll start with that. On this document, what I want to do is add the current date into the header on the first page and put the path of the document into the footer on the first page. And then every page after that, I want to add the page number two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the header area because that's where I want to add my first part of information. But before I begin adding my header, I want to do what I call housekeeping. I want to make sure everything's set up the way it needs to in order to create my header and footer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click different first page. Now, when I explained what I wanted to do with this document, I said that I wanted to add the current date and the file path to this document on the first page. And then on the subsequent pages, I wanted to add the page numbers. This means I'm going to have a different first page. So I'm going to check this box. Once I do that, it changes the information for my header from header to first page header. This differentiates it from the subsequent headers because it's telling me this is first page header. It is going to be different than the other pages. So if we were to go down to the next page header, it tells us it's just a header. So that's how it's differentiating it between the remaining pages. So I'm going to come back up to the top here. I want to add the date. So I'm going to come up to the insert group on the design tab and I'm going to click date and time. 
When I do that, it opens up the date and time dialog box. Now here I've got options available of different formatting for the date. I want it to have the day of the week in addition to the actual date, so I'm going to click the second option and I'll come down here to click OK. Now before I click OK, there's an option above it that I can check to update automatically. What this means is that it will automatically update this date in my document anytime I open up the document if I check this box. I don't want the date to update. I want it to remain consistent with today's date, so I'm not going to check this box. So I'm going to say OK. It adds my date to the header. Great. Excellent. Exactly what I wanted to do. Now I want to go to the footer and add the path of the document. So I can either scroll down and go into the footer that way, or I can come up to my navigation area and click footer. I'm in the first page footer. This is where I want to put the path of the document. Now the path is actually document information. So I'm going to come up to the insert group and I'm going to click on document info and choose file path. It adds my file path to my document. Excellent, exactly what I wanted to do. Now I want to go to the next page and start numbering my document. So I'm going to click Next. When I click Next, it's going to take me to the next footer because I was in the footer area. So here I want to add my page numbers. So I'm going to come over, click Page Number, Bottom, and I'm just going to add a plain page number in the center of the page. Excellent, page two, exactly what I wanted. Double click, come back out. If you look at my first page, I've got my date at the top. I've got my path on it. My second page, I've got my page number. Third page, page number, etc. You'll see that the first page was completely different. It put my date and my path on it, and it didn't carry it over to any of the other pages because I told it to have a different first page. Okay, so that's how you do um, headers and footers on a more simplified document. Now we're going to go to a little bit more complicated document, a document that has section breaks within it. So I'm going to come over and open up my second document. This document is a presentation overview that I'm working on. I've got my cover page, my table of contents that I'm going to be adding, and then the body of my document. Okay. You'll notice after my table of contents here, I've got a section break, not a page break, but a section break, because what I'm doing here is I'm dividing my document into different sections so that when I'm putting headers and footers on them, I can differentiate between the two sections. For instance, in this document, on the cover page in the footer area, I want to add the company name. Then I want to come into the body of the document and start the page numbers. Now I don't want the page numbers to be on the table of contents page or the cover page, so I'm breaking it up and I'm breaking it into sections. Now you'll notice when I'm working in my document, I've got my uh, paragraph markers turned on. The reason I do this is I like to see where I'm actually working within my document. Because I am in the print layout view, if I were to come up and turn off my paragraph markers, I wouldn't know that I've got a section break in here or even a page break in here. So I like to work with them on and it also makes it a little bit easier when I'm working with documents where I'm cutting and pasting a lot of information or if I'm working in a document that has a lot of styles so I can keep track of the styles when I take things. What I want to do with this document is put the company name in the footer on the first page and then in the body of the document, I want to start page numbering. So I'm going to go in, and just like we did in the last document, I'm going to do my housekeeping first. Let's scroll up to the top of the document, and we'll come into the footer area. This is where I want to put the company's name. So before we begin adding information, like I said, let's do our housekeeping. I want this page to be different. I'm not going to carry over the company name on any other page. So I definitely want to make sure that different first page is checked, and it is. And I know that because when I look at the heading here, it says first page footer section one. Now notice it says section one here. Because this document is broken into sections, it's treating each section separately. Okay, And that's how we can add um, headers and footers differently for one section versus another section. Okay, so excellent. That's exactly how I want it for here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down 
until we get into the body of the document, the footer here. Now this says first page footer section two, but I don't want the first page in section two to be different than the second, third, or fourth pages in this section. So I'm going to turn off different first page and make it just a normal footer section. But it is section two and we do want it to stay that way so we keep our section break in there because we want the numbering to start here. Now you'll notice over on the right it says same as previous. What this means is if you have this turned on, it's going to do the footer the same as the previous footer. Now this is a new section and we want to start our numbering here. We don't want it to mirror any footer from a previous area, so we're going to turn this off. So we'll come up here to the navigation area, click on link to previous, which is grayed right now, highlighted, which means it's turned on, and we're going to click it to turn it off. Once we click it, you'll notice the link to previous has been removed. We're no longer linked back to the previous footer, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so at this point, we've turned on and off any settings that we need. So we can go ahead, come back to the top of our document, and add our company name. And we're going to put it over here on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and type it in. Okay, excellent. So now we're going to go down and start adding our page number. So we're going to go to the next and to the next. Excellent. We're in section two, first page of our body of our document, and this is where we want to add the page numbers. So we'll come over again. I'm just going to add a plain page number in the center. Okay. Now you'll notice it started on page two because it's counting the pages except for the cover page. We don't want it to start on page two. This is actually what we want to be page one of our document because we don't want to count the table of contents as part of our document. So we're going to highlight it, do a right click, click format page numbers. Once we do that, it takes us to our page number format dialog box. Now when this opens up, we've got multiple options available to us. Our first one is number format. If we click on the down arrow, we can change the way the number looks, change it to letters, small eyes, and so forth. Uh, we could also include um, chapter numbers if we had them. Now what we want is under the page numbering section. This is where we could tell it to continue from a previous section if we wanted to, but that's not what we're doing here. We want to tell it where to start the numbering, what number to start on. So we're going to come here, change this to 1 because we wanted to tell it this is page 1. This is where we want page 1 to start and count from here. So we'll change that to 1 and say OK. Now you'll notice that we've got page one here, page two, and so forth. Excellent, exactly what we wanted it to do. Okay, we'll come back to our document. If we come back up, we've got our company name. Come down to the body of our document, we've got page one, page two, page three. Excellent, exactly what we wanted. So remember, when you go in to create your headers and footers, check your settings first. Make sure you've got different first page if that's what you want or turn it off. Check to see if you've got your section break set up. Check to see if you've got it so that it's linked to the previous if you need that or not. Make sure all your settings are the way you want so that it's easier once you start typing your information into your headers and footers that you don't have to go back and troubleshoot. Thank you.